Hi, so I'm back with kind of a short video, but I'll have lots of links down below kind of with my last one. So today I'm bringing you some really handy apps. If you're somebody that's gonna be moving abroad to Europe for an extended amount of time, or maybe you're traveling for the summer, maybe you're gonna be gone for a long stretch. And these are apps that really, really helped me when I moved to London for a couple of years. Now I found loads of these in group discussions and reddits, and I'm not on Facebook anymore, but Facebook groups are a good place for this too. And I still use some of these today because they just made my life so much easier. So if you're a digital nomad, you're probably already using some of these, but definitely more for you. Um, a lot of these are related to living in the US or being American living abroad. I'm sure you know before you go anywhere, uh, photocopy everything, right? So photocopy your licenses, your cards, uh, your vaccination records, in addition to having them in digital. Obviously banking can be kind of an issue, so make sure you don't have a lot of fees related to the cards you're gonna use. But what I did is uh, I set up with TransferWise, which is an app and a card. You can transfer funds on it to use in different locations, depending on the local currency, but it's uh, inexpensive, has very low rate for when you're moving around from your bank back home to anywhere else. Things like Apple Pay don't necessarily work everywhere, so the more backups you have, the better. When I went to the UK, I read a lot about the Monzo card, which I think is here in the US now, and it really saved me because before I could set up like a proper bank account, which Monzo is a bank, you could use it, but it's like digitized. Um, so I ended up doing another bank later when I was working with somebody in London, but Monzo card's great because everything is tap in the UK and most of Europe. And so it's easier to have like a local card. Uh, you're just not gonna have to worry about it as much. It's also great because you can move funds in and it has a really good system with like controlling and tracking and balancing all your funds. So I highly recommend it. And you can start that before you even go abroad. Okay, one of my favorite things I did was using PostScan. So what it is is like a corporate mailbox back here in the US, right? So it's forwarding everywhere, but unlike a PO box with the USPS, which you still have to come clear it all the time, PostScan sends you through the app. Every piece of mail you get, you can ask them to open and scan it. You can have it forwarded to anywhere you are in the world. And it has been a lifesaver and I keep using it now to this day. I also like using a VPN. I use Nord just because sometimes I wanna access websites back in the US or Canada when I'm abroad. So that's just a good thing to have anyways, protect your IP. Okay, phones. Uh, I have a backup phone and I switch out the SIM card when I'm in Europe because you can literally buy those at the airport. You can even sign up with a company like GiftGaf uh, in the UK that will give you a phone number. It's really handy. Or you can sign up virtually with Skype or Grasshopper for a digital number. Okay, language. So a lot of Europe and other places, yes, do they speak English? Sure, but should you know how to say some phrases and words locally? Hell yes. So Duolingo, always a fun app. I know loads of you use it. I actually worked with a tutor on Preply, which I really liked because you can link with tutors around the world and in specific like dialects if you're looking for something. And so I was working, I was trying to regain my French before I went, it's still going, but um, I do highly recommend it. And of course, Google Translate, you know, you can't go wrong one in a pinch, type in something you need to say and share it if it comes down to that. Mapping, okay, I know people use Google and stuff, but if you're not really utilizing that on your own phone, I'm a huge fan of City Mapper, and every major city in Europe is on that, and I can't say enough about it because it breaks down all the local transportation routes, timing, uh, location. It, by far, it was better than any other um, transportation or map that I had as an app, so highly recommend it. If you're going to Europe, make sure it's in your phone. I had Trainline, the app in my phone, which I highly recommend because you're gonna be taking the train a lot of places. Specifically when I was in the UK, I used it for everything and I just bought uh, less expensive tickets and always had them on my phone, so that's handy. Yes, they have the Uber app over everywhere in Europe, so it's very handy, just as useful. Um, rental cars, I didn't do that. Um, I know Turo, which is kind of popular in the US, they have in, I think the UK and France now, but I haven't tried it there in terms of like, it's kind of like the Airbnb of, of cars. Something else that came in handy as a solo traveler this time is some locations when I was tired and I didn't want to be hassled and had a lot of luggage I used welcome pickups. So that was like pre-booking airport pickups when I flew into Rome or Barcelona. Um, it was great. It was really, really handy and you just felt better knowing that you had somebody there to get you to your location, especially if you're flying in somewhere late. You can still all use the same hotel apps like Hotels, Hotel Tonight, uh, Airbnb, One Fine Stay and all that stuff. But there's like loads of different uh, local sites to check out. Same with uh, airlines, obviously flying uh, within Europe is very inexpensive, obviously same with trains, um, but a lot of people use Skyscanner. So that's a handy website to use when you're there as well. 
and Google Flights. That was the other one. So I have, I mean, there's so many, but those are just fundamental ones that really saved me a lot. So if you have any questions, let me know and I'll put my links below so you can check them out too. Have fun this summer.